Life is suffering. Existence is pain. Why won't you stop sliding? Hello and welcome to the very first devilogue for The Break-In, the co-op burglary game where you become a thief, a cloaked figure moving unknown through the shadows like a ghost with a crippling gambling debt and a need to earn a quick buck. But what fun is burglary without the burgled? It's all too easy to steal from an empty house. You need a challenge, someone to avoid, someone you can strike fear into should they notice you. Well, worry not, because we're about to add residents to the game. Let's just go ahead and add our first resident. That was easy. Unfortunately, he's currently quite blind and won't really do much. Let's give him a brain. The AI will regularly check the position of the player to determine if it can see us or not. First off, if we're too far away, he won't be able to see us. Secondly, we can check to see if we are within a cone in front of his eyes. This cone is easily adjustable to create NPCs who are more or less alert than others. Finally, we need to check if there's anything blocking his line of sight. We do this by drawing a line out from his eyes towards us. If this line hits something other than the player, he can't see us. This is a simple solution, but we can make it more accurate later on. And now, if I walk into his field of view, he lets out a frightful yell, but he doesn't really do much else. Let's add a few animations to spice things up. Now we see our resident standing here in the living room. Perhaps he's waiting for somebody, contemplating the mysteries of the universe or some such. Now if I enter his field of view, he is struck by terror, falling to the ground before clambering back up and going back to standing around. He should probably run away about now. Uh, sorry to interrupt, but some of you watching may have faced this kind of situation before in real life. Have you ever tried to acquire some items from a house which is perhaps not yours, only to find that there's a pesky man standing in the living room keeping watch. Well, worry not, friends, because I have found a way to give each and every one of you the very real power of invisibility. Yes, that is right, I have arranged for everyone who presses like on this video to instantly turn invisible in real life. So, go ahead, claim your invisibility, and let's get back to the video. Alright, let's get this guy walking. Now, he is going to need a little bit of help getting around. He's just a dumb computer after all, and his eyes are literally painted on. First off, we need a way to tell the NPC where he can and cannot walk. Fortunately, there's a magic button for this. I love modern game development. This creates a sort of map called the Navigation Mesh, which is shown here in blue. Blue equals can walk, and no blue equals no can walk. The NPC can use this map to figure out a path from its current position to any other position on the level. Now all I need to do is write a very simple script to move the NPC along this path and play an animation while he does it, and we're done. I cannot wait to see this advanced, ultra-realistic, natural AI walking a Wait, wait, what's happening? What? Why does it look like that? Oh no, I've balls this up, haven't I? Okay, alright, that's enough of that. This may be harder than I initially thought. Time to get googling and I'll be right back. Two hours later. Life is suffering. Existence is pain. Why won't you stop sliding? Uh, oh, oh, you're back. Uh, going to need another couple hours. One eternity later. I've done it. It may have cost me my sanity and uh, half of my hair, but I have mastered the ability to walk. Just look at that. The majesty, the perfection. Each foot placed perfectly on the ground, no sliding, no slipping in sight, it is beautiful. Perfect, so how did I achieve this fantastic NBC movement? Well, the answer lies in the animations. Typical animations will contain information not just about how the legs, arms, and head 
for example, should move, but also information about how the body as a whole should move. This overall movement is known as root motion. A character with no root motion simply runs in place, while a character with root motion actually moves along the ground. My first attempt at NPC movement didn't use root motion. This is how many games implement NPC movement, because it's easier to simply move the player along a path, and then add in the animations later, but it can be hard to match up the movement speed perfectly to the animation, which is why there is sliding. A more advanced approach uses only root motion to move the character. This is beneficial because in good animations, the root motion speed will always accurately match the foot placement, even for complicated animations which might change speed part way through, such as when the character is speeding up or slowing down. This essentially shifts the job of properly placing the character's feet to the animators, which I am very much in favour of because I am not an animator. This method is more difficult to implement, however, because you have less control over the character's movement. It may be difficult, for example, to move the character forward by, say, 10 centimetres if the step distance in their animations is 1 metre. It can also cause situations in which the character is not able to turn quickly enough, for example, and could lead to the character walking into or even through walls or other obstacles. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. To prevent this, I added an extra layer of collision detection around the character. This simply checks if the character has hit any obstacles, and if so, it would just give him a little nudge back. There may be a little bit of sliding in this particular case, but it's much rarer and less noticeable than before. With the added collision detection, we see that the NPC no longer clips into the wall. Now that we can make the NPC go from one point of the map to another, we can make him run away by picking a random point on the edge of the map and telling the NPC to run to that point when he sees the player. Let's see it all in action, shall we? <coughs> He's still just as terrified as before, but now we can see that he runs away in an attempt to escape. Now, at this point, the game feels a little unfair, given the resident's super Robocop ability to instantly detect us as soon as we enter its line of sight. In real life, it may take a few seconds for someone to notice a figure creeping about in the shadows. So let's take inspiration from some of the classic stealth games. Games like Metal Gear, Assassin's Creed, and Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. Time to get modeling. I'll be right back. Here we have it, ladies and gentlemen, I give you what I call the question mark. But this is no ordinary question mark, because... It can transform. Oh yes, let's put it in the game. I'll give it a nice bright colour, put it above the NPC's head, give it a subtle bobbing effect. Fantastic. Now, let's see it in action. Instead of immediately noticing the player, the NPC starts a timer in their head. This is sort of like their brain's processing time. What was that? Swore I heard something. That's not a... a... a burglar! During this lengthy process of realisation, our transforming question mark will be communicating the imminent danger to the player. And he's away again. Goodbye. Now, I have heard that in a typical human household, people don't tend to just stand around the house like this in complete silence. I've read that usually people keep themselves occupied with things like uh, video gamers, uh, reading, and, and strenuous yoga. Uh, so we'll need a system to simulate all this and give our resident a routine of actions to go through so he can pretend to have a life. It's time to acquire a lot of animations and get to work. For now, I'll just string together some animations manually to create the desired action, as you can see with this TV watching action, where the character goes through a series of emotion-rich animations, which one might feel while watching their favourite show. I'll probably add a randomization step to this later to keep things fresh, but this will do for now. So far, I've added animations for watching TV, working at a computer, and talking on the phone. Now, what do you think I should add next? Perhaps A. An intense exercise bike session. Or maybe B. Single-handedly orchestrating a coup d'etat in South America leading to 40 years of rampant authoritarian government and deadly civil war. Or C. Playing fetch with the family dog. 
Leave your answers below and you may well see it in the next video. Just, just don't choose B, please. So now we have a simple resident who will go about the house doing various normal human things and notice the player if they stay within line of sight for too long. They'll also scream and run away when alerted. There are still a few things to tweak and fix up, but for now they provide an extra obstacle to your thieving ways. Rest assured, I've got more devlogs coming very soon, covering things like police, who will be able to tase the ever-loving crap out of you should you get spotted, as well as special new items you can use to aid in your thieving. So make sure you subscribe and give that bell a little tickle if you want to be one of the first to watch the next video. You can also wishlist the break-in on Steam, and join the Discord community if you'd like first dibs on beta testing. Check the description. Thanks for watching.